The Squid Game begins with the main character as a little child having a flashback of, you know, when him playing the Squid Game, which uh, I don't really know much about the game except that it involves little boys stripping down other little boys. Fast forward to the present and our main character is broke, divorced and still lives with his mama. <laughs> He's the father of the year. Not only does he forget his daughter's birthday, but also has no custody over the child due to his financial circumstances. Then his mother goes, I give you the money so you can buy your daughter a birthday gift. Then he goes, wow, thanks mom. I'm gonna steal your credit card and go gambling. He lose some. He wins some. Turns out none of that really matters because he not only owes the bank, but also loan sharks a lot of money. Side character review. He tries to give back some money and turns out all the money that he earned was stolen by the side character. Ew. I think he likes him. Oh yeah, he likes him for sure. Signs a new contract that if he doesn't pay by the next month, he'll lose one of his kidneys and one of his eyes. Yikes. So to celebrate his daughter's birthday, ends up buying his daughter the cheapest food you can get in South Korea. Stop the cap. This painfully reminds him that she's in a much better situation because he's no longer in custody of her. Stop the cap. But our main character redeems himself by giving his daughter the best birthday present ever. School shooter vibes. This ain't America, baby. Long story short, he meets a random dude who's able to offer some money if you win some games. Get slapped in the process. Ends up winning some money and is promised more money if he's able to hit up their number. Hits them up because he's broke, agrees to play the game, and before you know it, he wakes up in the middle of nowhere. With 456 participants, which includes the side character that stole the money, have all agreed to participate in the games. The rules are simple. You win the game, you win the money. You lose, you lose. Participants will play a total of six games, with the first one being red light, green light. To win this game, you have to walk past the statue, but you can only walk when it shouts or red light, green light. If you make any movement after the words red light, green light has been said, you will be eliminated. Oh, and one other thing. If you lose the game, you lose your life. I hate to be that guy, but like, why are you moving? Like, if you just stop moving, then like, you'll be fine. But out of the shock that they received, they decided not to follow the rules, which ended up to their own deaths. So yeah, a lot of people died. This old man has balls of steel. And this girl be like, I can't have another man with prettier hair than me. Yeet. And this guy be like, yo, please save me. And the main character is like, yo, should I? Nah. As more people start to clear the first game, the main character nearly slips to his death, but is saved by the best character in the series. Clears the first game. Those who haven't all die. And 201 contestants are left. Turns out all the players are having to be in a lot of debt, and they all have their own personal reasons to participate in the games. A lot of players start begging for their lives and wish to go home, regardless of the prize money of 45.6 billion won. The players vote to go home and the majority wins. Back home, the main tells the cops but nobody listens, except one cop who happened to see the same business card his brother had when he went missing. However, as the players return home, we find that life in the real world isn't as good as it seems. The main character, ki -hoon's mother, is in hospital and is in need of surgery, which requires a lot of money. ki -hoon's childhood friend, sang -hoo, tries to kill himself due to the debt that he has. <laughs> Wolf cut baddie, Kang se needs money to find her family and bring them home to South Korea. <laughs> the best character in the series, Ali, needs to provide for his family, but is constantly mistreated by racism. So Ali be like, if you think racism okay, I take your hand away. Basically, the characters realize that their lives are better off dead and thus they return back to the games. One police officer tracks ki and is able to successfully enter into the facility. I really don't like her. For the second game, the players will select one out of four shapes out of a circle, triangle, star, and an umbrella. The shape they have chosen is the shape they must piece out, and if they are unable to do so, they will die. For example... Stop. 
I will say this though, there are so many guards watching and yet this woman is blatantly cheating and doesn't get caught. How? So yeah, there were players that failed, but there were also players that succeeded. Ew, does she actually think that's attractive? Ugh. Bro, how do you not get caught? Instead of cheating, I mean, look at this guy, what he does to try to win. He'd be like, huh? Nani? If there's a will, there's a way. The main character passes the test because he's the main character. The second game ends as the players prepare for game number three. Due to lack of food, we get internal conflict amongst the players. The players start forming groups to protect themselves during the night. And once the lights are out, the knives are out. Players fight amongst themselves during the dark, but you can't really see much, and not gonna lie, it kind of looks like they're shooting a music video. Oh, would you look at that? They're bonding. Our favorite character, Ali, comes to the rescue. More team bonding. Fight is broken up by the guards as more people have died. As players prepare for the third game, they need to be in teams of 10. So players go out to seek their love interest. Oh, I mean, our uh, players. She'd be like, Oppa, 사랑해. I give you the Korea Boo vibe or hashtag only London. You like that? Oh. I guess not. As players settle into groups, the third game is tug of war. So yeah, team one goes against team seven and uh. Team 1 wins pretty easily. The next matchup is Team 4 against Team 5. Despite Team 4 having an old man and three women, they were able to beat a squad of all men. Before Team 4 wins, there are some honorable moments. Like this one, she looks like she's going through menopause. No team is shown to play tug of war after that, which is basically the series saying, hey, no other team matters except Team 1 and 4. Thank you, Ali. Never change. The players go on night duty to protect themselves during the night. One player gets caught cheating, which results to his death. The police officer explores the facility and is able to get more clues about his missing brother. For the next game, the players are required to be in pairs. But not everyone was able to find a pair to pair up with. Unfortunately for the fourth game, the player needs to compete with their partner to get 20 marbles in total to win. Kang Zibiga and her partner is just chilling. Thug A beats Thug B. Ali basically beats Sang Woo, but is manipulated and thus betrayed and unfortunately loses his life. They did my guy dirty, bro. Gunny beats the old man. Through this conversation, these two players were able to become close. However, hey yo, who's cutting onions, my guy? Both agree to play the game where the win is decided by the marble that is closest to the wall. This scene actually hit me in my feelings as we hear the last words of a true friend. As game number four wraps up, turns out this woman is unfortunately, I mean, fortunately alive, as the rest of the players are in a state of shock and disbelief. Turns out there are VIPs that watch the games for their own entertainment. How much did you bet? A million bucks! It's, uh, such a beautiful number! 69! <laughs> Not gonna lie, the white actors in these series are kind of cringe, and their acting is pretty poor. The police officer seems to be doing a good job finding more clues. 
For the fifth game, the players are to select a number tag from the numbers 1 to 16. To win this game, the players are to cross the bridge stepping over two types of glass. One breaks very easily and the other glass can carry the weight of two people. The numbers the players selected are the order in which they cross the bridge. When I first saw this, I was like, why can't you just use your shoes and throw it at the glass to find out which one cracks or breaks easily? Because the rule is to take off your shoes, but the rule never says you can't use it. <laughs> hey, he's actually doing pretty well. Never mind. So this player decides to guess and goes, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, whatever happened, I still fall. The next player decides to embrace his Asian heritage and does some quick maths before his death. I believe I can fly. The next player suffers from short-term memory loss, but also asks the person behind them who also suffers from short-term memory loss. <laughs> The main character goes last because he's the main character. This one says, thank you, Jesus. And God says, you want to see him? <laughs> Stop the cap. <laughs> She's like, nah, I like Romeo and Juliet. I die, you die. We all die together. <laughs> With a limited time remaining, we see Sangwoo's real character. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. The last three players, Sangwoo, Sebek, and Kyun, all make it to the final round. This is the part that gets ridiculous for me. If you're trying to entertain the VIPs as much as possible, why would you risk injuring your finalists? The cop escapes the facility, calls for backup but doesn't get any help, gets caught. <laughs> Turns out one of the masterminds that work for the games also happens to be the police officer's long lost brother. That's just sad, man. Bro, I was actually fuming when I found out that she was fatally injured because I really wanted her to win and to see her like that, nah, bro, this ain't it. Yeah, it comes in. Kihun sticks together with Sebyuk and makes a promise to help each other's families if one of them are unable to make it out. Sebyuk suddenly collapses because of her injury. Kihun calls for help, but Sanghu uses that opportunity to murder her. For the last game, the Squid Game, an epic showdown begins between Kihun and his childhood friend Sanghu. <laughs> <laughs> Ki-hoon beats Sangwoo for the sake of Sebyuk, however, till the very end, refuses to kill him. <laughs> Sangwoo apologizes and did what he planned to do before he entered the games and kills himself. <laughs> By ki winning the games, he receives the prize money in full, but refuses to spend a penny in the beginning due to his guilty conscience. <laughs> As Kyun continues to live his life, he receives a location with the same business card. Out of curiosity, he enters the location and finds out the very mastermind and creator of the games was the old man himself. <laughs> Turns out the old man had so much money it no longer brought him any joy in life and created the games to have some fun. He reminds ki that he's never forced anyone against their will to play and thus tells ki he has the right to spend the money before passing away. In the end, he finds Sebyuk's brother to fulfill the promise made to Sebyuk and not only takes care of him but also finds and takes care of sang mother. As the series ends with Ki-hoon calling his beloved daughter, we catch a glimpse of the same random man who offered ki the business card for the games. Kihun calls the number, vows to find out who they are, and off we wait for season two. Overall, I enjoyed the series. Comment down your thoughts, and yeah, till next time.